This is the Spiker Seattle Violet. It is a just start. It is the Dutch Pagani. Absolutely every detail of this automobile makes you want to explore more. There are no simple parts in this car. Every single one is unique and detailed. You can see the traces of inspiration from aviation in this design. The car manages to look extremely executive, quite aggressive and elegant at the same time. You can see the Spectre just in one glance at it. On the flip side, the drivetrain is quite simple, but it is processed and verified by time, the Audi 4.2 V8. The car is paired with a manual, the mechanism of which you can see in the interior. There are no assists or any other things that could help you drive in it. However, you don't feel like in a coffin on wheels, like you would in a Carrera GT. Instead, you feel dignified and controlled, even when sleeping. And beside bringing visual pleasure, it certainly brings driving pleasure. On paper, and to be fair in real life, this car is quite sluggish for such a class. Almost 5 seconds, 0 to 100, and a top speed of only 300 km per hour. It gets destroyed by its rivals. But I think... Uh, this car is incomparable to them. Would you really care about speed buying this car? With great confidence, I can say that this is literally incomparable in craftsmanship and quality with its rivals. Or as a matter of fact, with any car, aluminum and leather are the two main materials used here. Everything is carefully put out with precision. Every bit is there on purpose and it adds detail and fullness to the composition. The only plastic part of this interior is the ignition switch cap. Rivals, the creator of Spiker, Martin De Bruyne, created this rated this without a large start like the rivals did. For example, they are rating the F430 were already from large brands, and barely anybody knew about Spiker at that moment. It all started with the Silvestris, which doesn't look quite good, but this was literally a solo effort by Martin, made in his garage and with limited resources, they still managed to create this. Since we're still here in Zandvoort, I would like to go over a few technical bits and facts here and there. The car's Audi engine outputs roughly 400 horsepower. The car is extremely lightweight because of its aluminum space frame chassis and overall construction. It weighs only 1,275 kilos. The car's body panels were made from aluminum. Only 55 LaViolettes were ever made and only a handful were supplied to the USA. The name LaViolette comes from Joseph Valentin LaViolette, who helped develop several Spyker race cars in the early 1900s. We figured out the Spyker is great on track, but is it so great on public roads? I've driven before quite a lot, 45 kilometers. Well, I won't hesitate to drive it one more time for the review and many more times because this car is playing the amazing even driving at 20 km per hour brings emotion even with being so light the car still manages to feel really smooth and comfortable it is quite astonishing So I, sh I shouldn't probably drive it like that for the road test because we are seeing how well it performs outside the track. So I just get the same enjoyment from driving it slow as I do as driving it on the track. I can say with great confidence that the Spyker C8 is one of my favorite cars ever built. If I could review one in real life, I most definitely would not miss that chance. I mean, who would? I simply don't have more comments, Ray. Just enjoy the Spyker.
So, what happened to Spiker after the CA Laviolette? Besides releasing a special edition Spiker LM85, the Aileron came out, and after it, the Prolate, but none of the two went into production. Also, a Beniastro concept was made, and yet again, nothing. The brand eventually filed for bankruptcy, and now it is owned by some Dutch guy which keeps all the spikers in his garage. But the heritage of the C8 still lives under Martin de Bruyne's own newer project, the Ferox V8.